In this first lesson, we're just gonna get re-familiarized with Maya. So if you're an advanced user, you can just skip ahead to the next lesson. But if you're still getting familiar with Maya, let's just cover this very quickly. Hopefully you've taken one of my other Maya classes already, so you're already familiar with Maya. But basically, we need a three button mouse to navigate around. We're gonna hold down Alt and left click to rotate, middle mouse to pan around, and right click to zoom in and out. And if you don't like the color of your background here, like mine, you can hit Alt B and change that. And I like to kind of keep it blue just so there's a gradient and you kind of see more contrast there. And this is our grid and we can turn that on and off here. And we can also turn on anti-aliasing. I don't know if you can see that on your screen. Let me try to zoom in a little bit here. And you can hopefully see that the anti-aliasing kind of smooths everything out a little bit. So that's kind of nice to feature to turn on. Other than that, we basically have our uh, viewport here, which is what this is called. You can ignore pretty much every menu up here. We're only going to be using a few things um, inside of Maya, but we're going to go deep into those couple of things we're going to use for animating text. Uh, we're going to go into keyframes and we're going to use just maybe two of these menus up here. So don't get too bogged down with how many menus you, you see up here because we're only going to use a few of them for this course. Uh, if you want a deeper understanding of Maya in general and know what more of these buttons do, I have another course that uh, covers all that called Maya for Beginners. So the other things to consider when we're looking at what we have here, and uh, maybe yours doesn't look exactly like mine right now, but basically we have an outliner and we can dock that wherever we want. I like to keep it over here on the left. And if you don't see that, you can go to Windows Outliner and you can always turn that back on. So if we lose that somehow, we can always open that back up. So that'll help us keep track of what we're doing and what our objects are named and we can rename them here. And let's just create an object real quick. I'll go to the poly modeling shelf and hit a sphere. So now we have a sphere, I'll hit F to focus in on it. So we zoom in on it and I can hit Q to select it, click and drag and also select it with a single click. And then we have W to move things around. We have E to rotate and we have R to scale. And right now I have snap scaling on, <laughs> which is kind of annoying. There's a bunch of little options here. So if you run into anything like this, just ask me a question and I will get back to you and help you with it. So for this example, if, you, if your scale is snapping and this is to kind of keep it at whole integers, we can change that by holding down R, left clicking, and then we can see snap scale is checked on. And so if we just let go of our mouse over on top of that, now we can scale without any problem. Um, so that's just one little thing and kind of to mention there's a bunch of menus in here. If you hold down W, you get the move uh, options here. So we can move based on world space. I don't know if you noticed, you know, if I rotate this over and now uh, the up axis is still up and down even though the sphere is rotated over. So if we want to get back to having it in object uh, mode here, we can do that by holding down W, left clicking and holding down left click and then when we release, it will choose that other mode. And that's the same is true uh, for rotation as well. And I showed you that as well for um, scale. That's how we had that snap option that was turned on. So we can turn that back on over here and it'll snap that, but I think that was just on by mistake. So there's those types of little hidden menus there. Um, not that big of a deal. You can just hit W again for move, E for rotate, R for scale. And on the right here, we have our attribute editor. You can see that's written right here. And then we also have our uh, icon here that's selected that lets us know we're in the attribute editor. And then we have our channel box here. So you can see channel box is written here. And these two places are really where we're gonna spend the most time between attribute editor and this. And eventually we're gonna work in the mash menu here, but we'll get into that later. And so what this shows us is the name of the object and all of its kind of absolute values based on the scene here. And what that means is, you know, if I move it around, you can see these values update. And there's one kind of cool thing about Maya is you can actually freeze transform. So for whatever reason, say I want this uh, position over here now to be considered zero, zero for this object, I can just go to modify freeze transformations and now everything is nice and clean and all zeroed out. So if I happen to move that over there for some reason, I know if I hit uh, select all of these uh, kind of value enter fields here, I can hit zero. I know it will go back to this spot because that's where I had freeze the transforms. So we'll get into more details like that later on, but I just wanted to show you kind of a couple of little, you know, interesting things that, that my can do. And, you know, with this manipulator, you can also select the uh, constrain options here. So we can go on two axes. We can also 
go on two axes this way so you know I'm not going back and forth in Z space here like this and I can prevent that from happening by selecting this kind of middle handle there you can kind of see it as I rotate around but so in this lesson we covered uh, navigating around the viewport we talked about how to manipulate objects and some of the little quirks that and menus that you can find and adjust how you manipulate and move things around in the next lesson we're just going to jump right in and start creating our type and then we'll move on into animating it thanks for watching